Manchester United are not considering sacking Eric Ten Hag, but, the, but there is an acceptance that this is a big week for him. All the fallout from the weekend. Patrice Evra reveals what could have been at the end of Sir Alex Ferguson's reign, and United are accelerating plans for the January transfer window. This plus all the latest Manchester United news and transfer news that will keep you right up to date with everything. Welcome to Man United Review. My name's Jamie. Before we get into it, please smash a like on the video. And let's jump straight on into it. So as you can imagine, all the noise, all the talk, all the kind of stories, everything, are all regarding Eric Ten Hag. Um, so let's run through where we're at with everything, what's happening, who said what, um, and keep you all up to date with what's kind of going on. So firstly, Laurie Whitwell said, privately, those in charge are echoing Ten Hag sentiments that altering the infrastructure and working practices at the club was the main priority when Ineos arrived. And patience is required to allow that to bed in to uh, and see results. Barada and Ashworth only went public unequivocally back in Eric Ten Hag at the start of this month. So changing course would now be a vault face and out of keeping for executives who like to be driven by methodical process. Laurie was a credible source. That means basically U-turn, um, which is unlikely from what he was saying. Um the Telegraph was saying that Ten Hag stays in charge for Manchester United ahead of Porto and Aston Villa. An immediate change of manager is not expected for the hierarchy. The important thing is to support the manager and staff and the players in this difficult period. Sam C said some around Eric Ten Hag think that enough work has been done around him to warrant a longer stay. Eric will remain in charge for games against Porto and Aston Villa, but is now under pressure. Peter Hall said that um, Derek Ten Hag's position as Manchester United manager is set to be reviewed by the club's hierarchy if they lose their next two games. He is not thought to be under immediate pressure of the sack. The Times said, Des despite the disappointment, the manager remains calm and keen to back the man they backed in the summer, even though um, everyone recognises that results and performances need to improve. And I'll just kind of summarise there. So the kind of talk is at the moment that Ten Hag's got at least the next two games before anything kind of happens. Um, and then depending on the results and also the performances, there may be a decision that gets made during the international break. Um, that's the kind of summary of, of where we're at at the moment regarding the manager. Now, Fabrizio Romano said, Manchester United are not considering sacking Eric Ten Hag. It's not part of the plans at the moment. The position of Manchester United is to keep trusting Eric Ten Hag and sticking with him. The next two games will be important for Eric Ten Hag's future. It's not just about the results. They want to see how the squad will react to this difficult moment. The kind of performance on the pitch in terms of motivation. So Romano kind of saying it's not just the results, it's how they kind of react to obviously the weekend. The feeling was that the reaction in the in a difficult moment was not the reaction you expect from important players wearing a Manchester United shirt. So it's nice to see someone come out and kind of give the players a bit of a bashing on this as well, because I do think they're partly at fault for what happened at the weekend. Um, Andy Mitten on his podcast said that support for Eric Ten Hag has evaporated. 20 was a snapping point for a lot of people. Ten Hag is on really thin ice. Jamie Jackson, who's got you know, good links with the club. The mood was characterised as calm, though there is an acceptance that this is a big week for, for Ten Hag as he attempts to turn around his side's form. That suggests losses in one or both games may lead to his removal, particularly if the um, if the manner of the of defeat is again alarming. Um, so overall, in summary, you know where we're at is he looks like he's got two games, and then depending on these two games, if they don't go well or we don't improve or we don't see a reaction, you know they're obviously going to be monitoring monitoring not just the results but also the performances as well. And then a decision could be made in the international break. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about that. I've been a, um, you know, I'm a Ten Hag in kind of fan. If you've been subscribing um, for a while or you've watched any of my my previous videos, I've always, I've kind of supported Ten Hag, and I'm still in that position because, you know, I just hope that he kind of can turn it around and stuff. I think the way I would describe myself at the moment, though, is. You know, I'm I'm losing faith is the way I would kind of stay. I still want to stick with the manager. Still want to try and break that cycle and see if we can just play our way through, through the pain. But it's it's, you know, 
it's becoming it's becoming almost undefendable at the moment. Some of the performances, and there's no excuses for it in my opinion anymore. Um, I was watching the Athletic podcast actually, um, and I can't remember who it was on there, but one of them kind of summarised it quite well. Said that they were there for the for Ten Hag's second game, I think it was against Brentford, when we lost four 0 and he said that at that time United were trying to play out from the back and couldn't do it and got battered four 0 And he said, and I watched against Tottenham, and they still can't play out the back and got battered three 0 in that game as well. So effectively, what he was saying that in two years, nothing's changed despite a massive change in the squad. So I, I, yeah, it is what it is. Though I think the, you know, there's only so long you can you can you can kind of like you you can put up with the performances and the results i think um let's go through what else was said so um second ten hag will now will cost manchester united around 17.5 million pound that's around half of the amount the club saved from making 250 employees redundant so about 17 and a half million pound is what it will cost if we do um, go down the route of second ten hag I thought Paul Scholes made a good point saying that when you bring in players, you expect them to be much better than the ones you already have. I don't see any players who make a big difference. Delit replaced Maguire, but that's not a big difference. I kind of, you know, I agree and, and disagree with that one in a way. Um, but I do agree that actually bringing in all these players, has it really made a massive difference? You know, I think we've had moments in games, but we haven't had a consistent 90, 90 minutes performance I can't remember ever under Ten Hag Wolves away last season, maybe was the only time off of memory that I can think of when we dominated a game for a full 90 minutes. Um, And I thought the Muppeteers kind of summed it up well, saying that new owners, entirely new structure, significant transfers, and we are still performing like the 15th best team in the league. It just does not take this long to look at minimum coherent game to game. I don't know of any other top team that's seeming that seeming game plans um, game plans one week at a time like we obviously do. So what the Muppeteers were effectively saying is it looks like we're just training or going from game to game, changing the tactics to fit the opponent, and that's why I think you do get some of these inconsistent performances. And I've got to be honest, I, I kind of agree with that as well. And I thought I'd throw this in there just to, just to pick you up <laughs> um, if you're feeling a little bit down. Gary Neville's time at Valencia, 28 games, 11 defeats, 39 goals scored and 38 goals conceded. Eric Ten Hag's last 28 games, 13 defeats, 35 goals scored and 45 goals conceded. So effectively, you know, in the last in a 28 game period, Ten Hag's doing worse than what Gary Neville did at Valencia. That's terrible, isn't it? Isn't that terrible? That's why, like I said, I'm kind of still wanting to stick with the manager and still kind of see see how we go. But, you know... I'm defending the indefensible sometimes, I think. Um, in terms of replacements, Gareth Southgate and Graham Potter would both likely be candidates for the Manchester United job if Eric Ten Hag is sacked. Eddie Howe, who is under consideration for the England job, is another name who Manchester United discussed in the summer. Thomas Tuchel is unlikely to be um, a front runner for the Manchester United job if Eric Ten Hag is sacked, even though the German would welcome a fresh approach. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is not expected to be offered a return to Manchester United if Eric Ten Hag a sack that came from Ben Jacobs. I always say take Ben Jacobs with a pinch of salt because he's a hitty missy, sometimes credible, sometimes not credible journalist. Adam Crafton made a good point from The Athletic, who's a good source, said, I don't understand the who is out there argument in relation to 10 high clubs. Often don't get ideal first choice candidates. Neither Slot nor Postacoglu were. Man United are um, especially bad under Ten Hag over an extended period of time. The idea there is no one better is absurd. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. And the Muppeteers said that Graham Potter will not be United manager. He is he's he's not being considered. Eddie Howe, not likely. Ashworth and Howe weren't exactly best friends. Most likely outcome is rude, seeing out the season and appoint a brilliant coach in the summer. So the Muppeteers going against what Ben Jacobs was saying there. I kind of think in terms of credibility, I would tip more towards the Muppeteers than Ben Jacobs. Like I said, Ben Jacobs is hit and miss. I think the Muppeteers have been quite reliable on his information um, recently. So I personally would point more towards the Muppeteers than than Ben Jacobs. And then the Mail. Um, this is the most recent update saying that our Manchester United players expect Eric Ten Hag to be sacked. Some of the players were surprised he was not sacked in the summer. There is a growing feeling that Eric Ten Hag cannot stop the rot and change is inevitable. Now, I, I kind of agree with that story because there was reports in the summer, if you remember, when Eric Ten Hag got a new contract that um, 
you know, some of the players were surprised by that. I don't necessarily think it's a negative um, because the report also does says that Ten Hag still has the support of the dressing room, but there is growing feeling amongst the players he cannot stop the rot and change is inevitable. So there's a so it doesn't appear like Ten Hag's losing the lost the dressing room. It just appears that some of the players just don't think that they're going to be able to stop the rot for whatever reason. And that kind of suggests to me that if the players are still behind the manager, there's something tactically going on. There's something going on with the training, something going on behind the scenes. I don't know what. I don't know who. I don't know whether that's the coaches, the manager, the players not following instructions, the you know the the kit man being rude. I don't know what it is. There's clearly something going on though where we're where we're incapable of putting in you know two performances that are similar in a row. It, it's ridiculous. Um, but overall, just to summarise the manager situation before we move on is. Two games, it looks like, so they're not going to make a decision yet. They're going to wait to see how um, the Porto... So we've got Porto away Thursday, Aston Villa away Sunday, see how the performances are and the results. I think it would be probably more performance-based, I would have thought. Um, but obviously, it is a results-driven business. If he loses both both games, then you know he, he's, he's in trouble, I think, from there. And then, depending on, how, obviously, how those results go will depend on on what kind of happens over the international break. But let me know what you think about the manager situation in the comments. Are you Ten Hag in still? Do you want him to go? Are you like me where like I'm just losing faith? That's that's where I would say I'm at the moment. I want to back the manager. I have backed the manager. Um, you know, I wanted him to do, but it's kind of like, well, we're running out of excuses and the performances are no better from, t- from time to time. Yes, we've had moments this season. I do think there has been some progress in some games, but ultimately... We're not winning games. We're not scoring goals. And those problems are a legacy issue from Ten Hag. They've been there from, from the first season, really. And I don't th- and I think he's got the players that he wants in. Do you know what I mean? Like, how can Dilip, Masrawi, Martinez, Onana, all players that are apparently Ten Hag players that have played under him, how can they all kind of down tools? I, I just don't... I think there's something systematically going on wrong at United. Um, but let me know what you think about that in the comments. Now let's move on to some transfer news if you're interested. So give me sport. This actually came from Dean Jones, who's quite credible with them, saying that Manchester United are beginning to accelerate plans to sign a new left back with Robinson on their list for a prolonged period. United are likely to meet sorry to want United are unlikely to want to meet Fulham's 40 million demands. Liverpool and Chelsea are also contemplating whether um to up the ante in their pursuit so that could be again he's a player that we we definitely a player of interest i think we've been linked with him for a while we need a left back even just for rotation because dallow and masrawi can't play every game and obviously you're going to get inconsistencies it seems from them this season which is which is unfortunate um whether we've got 40 million pound though in january i think would depend on player sales and then obviously if you've got if you're sacked ten hag by then that's going to cost you 17 18 million pounds then You know, that does affect PSR as well. So there's that to kind of consider. And then this final story is is a bit of nostalgia. What could have been? So Patrice Evra um, um, said that Sir Alex Ferguson said that Cristiano Ronaldo had 99%, um, sorry, agreed 99% to come back and Gareth Bale to join. He needed £200 million and the club refused to give him that money. And now they've spent a billion. That was in 2013. So Patrice Evra in a podcast effectively said that he had a chat with Ferguson in 2013, just after we'd won the title. Um, And he was saying that Cristiano Ronaldo was 99% um, set on coming back. And he wanted to sign Gareth Bale because he wanted to win the Champions League again. Um, And he's seen those two players. He wanted £200 million to do that and the club refused. And then obviously the rest is history. Fergie retired and, you know, now we've spent a billion pounds on average players. Like what could have been? What were, what are, you know, at that time we had Van Persie, uh, Rooney. So that would have been Van Persie, Bale on the left, Ronaldo probably on the right, and Wayne Rooney as your number ten. Carrick midfield, Skulls. I think Vidic, Evra was still. Um, Vidic, Fernand, Evra, Raphael. That would have been some team, wouldn't it? That would have been some team. That I think that would have with Fergie in charge. Um, you know, still had gigs here. I think Nanny was still there at the time. Do you know what I mean? Fletcher. Um, yeah, that would have been some team, wouldn't it? What could have been? What could have been if they'd kind of just pulled the money out 
and got that. That that kind of shows, I think, like a bit of a sliding door moments where the trajectory of the club, if we'd got them and then won another Champions League, you know, would Fergie have retired as early as he did? Do you know I mean it's one of those sliding door moments? But again, it just kind of says that the Glazers don't want to don't didn't want to invest that sort of cash. And obviously, two hundred million back in that day was a lot of money. Um, so you can kind of see where it comes from. But again, it, it just kind of shows shows that there is ambitious people at the club that do want to do things. They've just not been given the financial back in. But what a team that would have been. What a team that would have been. Um, so that's you all up to date with the latest Manchester United news and transfer news. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. I do enjoy reading them. Don't forget to smash a like on the video on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I will see you in the next one.